Now, as I've said for months, there's Trump and then there's everyone else. But there's the battle for number two, and that's between DeSantis and Haley. That's why I offered to host a debate between the two on the angle. Only one, Governor DeSantis, has responded and he accepted. Why do you think Nikki Haley has not responded yet? Well, she probably wouldn't like uh, what the debate would be about. I mean, I think she has taken very, very establishment-oriented positions. Uh, we know she had the social media proposal to force everybody uh, to give their names, which we know would be weaponized against conservatives. Anybody that's been alive for the last three or four years knows how that censorship regime works. Uh, she's also said no limits on immigration, that CEOs should determine our immigration policy. No, I think immigration policy should be what's in the best interest of the American people uh, and American workers. Uh, she also took the side uh, of Disney against the state of Florida and against us protecting our kids. Uh, I think she's relying on uh, liberal media to prop her up. Uh, but I'm game for the debate. Uh, you know, I'll debate at any of these folks. In the battle for second place in the Republican primary, Ron DeSantis is getting antsy again, looking for some kind of spark to get people energized about him since his expected explosion onto the map turned out to be a smokescreen instead. The only problem that DeSantis doesn't mention is that Vivek Ramaswamy and Chris Christie already got shut down by the RNC for trying to participate in an unofficial debate on Fox News under the threat of being barred from future RNC-sanctioned debates. They shut that down quick. DeSantis previewed some of the things that he's unnecessarily prepared to hit Haley with. Anyway, though, when it comes to legal immigration, it's a broken system. It shouldn't take someone 10 years to become a citizen. So... <clears throat> But what we need to do is reform it. So for too long, Republican and Democrat presidents dealt with immigration based on a quota. We'll take X number this year. We'll take X number next year. The debate is on the number. It's the wrong way to look at it. We need to do it based on merit. We need to go to our industries and say, what do you need that you don't have? So think agriculture, think tourism, think tech. We want the talent that's going to make us better. Then you bring people in that can fill those needs. Treating humans like cogs in a system that only needs them if they enhance the industry's bottom line. But some of these wild ideas aren't even what DeSantis' issue is with Nikki Haley. He's not happy that some of the wealthy rulers of our elected officials have begun to throw their support behind her. Um, the Koch brothers yesterday, I believe, yesterday or this morning, endorsed Nikki Haley. What are your thoughts of that? Well, look, I think that their network has, um, has taken certain positions uh, that uh, are conservative, some that are not. I mean, for example, they are uh, not someone that wants to control immigration. I think they've supported open borders. So Nikki is somebody that is very weak on immigration. She is not going to get that border secure. She would, of course, not build a wall, and she will not deport illegals who are here. And so I think that that gives her some synergy with that group. I think the other thing is, is you know, they've been very supportive of reducing criminal sentences and releasing people from prison. Uh, I think that that's bad policy. I think that that is failed in places like California. Uh, I think we've got to be tough on crime. We need to get these criminals off the streets. But I think they see in someone like Nikki, somebody that's going to be more aligned with establishment interests. And all I can say is uh, we have got to go into Washington and make big changes. Once that endorsement cash gets funneled to your opponent, I guess the next move is to burn those already fractured bridges in hopes of looking like a Republican that wouldn't want some Coke money. But they're not the only ones. You did come out and make a nice statement about Nikki Haley. You did. Even you've been talking to Nikki Haley. Liberal, yes, I have. Even if you're a very liberal Democrat, I urge you, you know, help Nikki Haley, too. You know, get a choice on a Republican side that might be better than Trump. And is that your view, that it's anything but Trump? I, I would never say that, you know, because he might be the president. I have to deal with that, too. And, <laughs> you know, but, but, but when he was I, the president, I, you said critical things about him. Yeah, I don't mind criticizing the president, yeah. So, Chase CEO Jamie Dimon wants Nikki Haley. But side note here, have you noticed how casually wealthy CEOs just discuss their direct influence on our politicians? After you give your $50 to a candidate, do you expect to have face-to-face -face meetings with them where you can tell them what policies to pursue that would enhance your life and they just listen? We're watching the business community brag about controlling our lives and our politicians while the ones up for sale bicker about how much each of them might have cost, when in reality, Damn near all of them have already been scooped up. But still, Nikki has to play the game and reject that label that they all wear. 
there's nothing establishment when you have Americans for Prosperity, the most conservative grassroots organization in the country, come out and endorse me because they like my economic plans and my plans for the future of America.